a very good day to you and welcome to this special Christmas episode of Cross Point produced by the National Christian Council of Sri Lanka. So in this episode we will be talking about the Prince of Peace. Well of course Christmas is where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus who is also known as the Prince of Peace. So to talk more about this we have with us Reverend Melvin De Silva. A warm welcome to you, Reverend. Thank you. Yes. So as I mentioned earlier, we know that Jesus Christ is known as the Prince of Peace and also as the wonderful counselor, mighty lord, king of kings. So why is Jesus known as the Prince of Peace? Uh dear Sean, actually looking at this whole experience now, this first first experience of the word Prince of Peace comes in, I would say, from Isaiah chapter nine, right? And foretold by Isaiah about the coming of Jesus. Um, my first understanding would be to look at uh, how do you encounter the Prince of Peace. Um, I'm not saying that peace is when everything is quiet and nothing, no, 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 no turmoil, no war, no, no dissensions around the place. But in the midst of all these challenges i would find the person who is dwelling in christ and christ dwelling in the person might encounter different experience altogether where jesus says very clearly in john chapter 15 i live in you you live in me that experience now when that happens his enthronement is in us i believe he becomes a different person altogether and the peace we're talking about here the prince of peace when he is within us no matter what storms are raging all around us, we still can rest on Him and abide in Him and enjoy that amazing quietness that we might encounter in our life. So, when we look at the Prince of Peace, I'm looking at actually going back to the shepherds who came to see Jesus. I mean, they really came because there was a message given to them and they came and saw the baby Jesus at that time and also we look at even uh, how they went back again rejoicing. We could look at also another very old man I see here who was um, talking about peace in his life. Very old man called Simeon. In the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 2 we find him. He was one who, was, uh, who, who came to the temple in Jerusalem when the parents took baby Jesus to the temple. And he was saying something very important there. Let me now die in peace. But I've seen your salvation. Looking at the baby, talking about the baby and saying, I can now die in peace because I've seen your salvation. Talking about Jesus, the salvation, right? So, uh, when we talk about the Prince of Peace, uh, let, us help, let, me, let me understand ourselves as to what we're talking about here. Right there, in the midst of this Christmas season, we see two stages. One is on the other side, Mary and Joseph as well, who were given challenges and also like the shepherds who were asked to come and also Simeon who saw Jesus. On the other side was another tormenting experience of Herod. This is Herod. But he was on the other side boiling in his own self, angry that there was someone called a king born there. Right? Okay. And he was angry. He was trying to be murderous. He was uh, revengeful. He was going out all out to kill the children under two years of age. That is a different experience altogether, right? He never wanted the Prince of Peace. Now, when I see the Prince of Peace here, all I see is the person who really comes into live in our life. The more we believe in him, more we trust in him, more we experience him in our life, that experience becomes a rich experience in all of our lives. So, when I talk, of the, talk about Jesus, the Prince of Peace, I believe and trust those who really believe in Jesus, those who trust in Jesus, Jesus, when you walk with Jesus, they become, they really come to that deep experience in Him every day. And I believe the Prince of Peace becomes true to people who really walk with Him every day in our own lives. So I would say uh, Prince of Peace is observed in that way, known that way, understood that way in my understanding experience. Well, that is a really good point, uh, Reverend. So. At present, people are somewhat in like a risky situation or I should say they don't have a proper understanding about what peace really is. So 
can you please explain to us why is it uh well actually okay in the present context we are all caught up in this whole rap of the war between israel and palestine and the, the things that are happening the atrocities that are happening there the murders that are happening there and there's a lot of debating going on about who is right who is wrong right and what amount of peace can come about come by i would really see peace is not uh, drawn out around a peace peace conference or peace table right that is very very uh, i would say it's not very artificial but peace comes in a, when a person really come to that experience of knowing jesus in the midst of all the strife that is happening around us in life take sri lanka for instance many people are seeing what the future is going to hold for us in 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 the country but why where would peace be for a person who is caught up in tension in their own lives there are uncertainties of their future their job situation their housing matters illness sometimes can be very terminal at at, at times the future of children their education very unsettled situation in our country right all the things are there a part of what is going on right now but if you really see uh look at the person who is walking you know having a deep experience in Christ i would really see that you know um peace is drawn out in that in that realm right uh and even when we see we talk about uh, the israel war israel war and the palestine war all that is there what will where, when will peace be there when will it be can people really enjoy peace having seen so many people being killed so many lives destroyed can they see that i don't think that can be done, can be done right it's just like herod tormenting so many children because of one little ch- person one little child child right it's a selfishness it's greed it's pride arrogance all that i believe and trust a person in grain is the part of the holy spirit right that person can really understand what peace is in christ in the prince of peace so my personal experience is first of all to a person to be really in fear of god person to be really involved in the holy spirit of god inside their lives all this experience of what happened in the birth event of jesus comes in out of the abundance of the holy spirit right through from the gospel of saint luke chapter 1 and 2 and all that is the holy spirit is working along in life even when he came to uh, the call of mary and joseph it was the holy spirit and that was i believe and trust that's exactly where we have to really ingraining ourselves in when the person is in the holy spirit our lives are different altogether we have so much joy and peace and love and you know uh, patience and understanding kindness gentleness all these things are there right there's no selfishness involved right there's no pride involved there's forgiveness involved so i believe and trust peace comes in when we are really ingrained in that experience with jesus christ well that's so true man So as Christians what can we do in order to share the peace of Jesus Christ with the others Uh this and I want how many of us really spend time to educate God's word All right and I believe and trust that initially the first Christian church of the Holy Spirit way back in the Pentecost uh, experience the church was enraged in two four areas one was prayer one was sharing god's word one was dwelling around the breaking of bread the other was fellowship and the church began to grow in numbers there right and that that became very infectious our christian life must be very infectious dear sir because our life must share the power of god through our lives to others people must see a gospel message in ourselves more than reading the gospel our lives must reflect and portray the message of jesus through to our lives right and i believe and trust that we need to be uh sharing that love in a most amazing way in a day to day capacity and that we a person who is living in that in that experience of peace with jesus you know can be such a blessing to many people the love that we share how we look at things when people are sometimes even insulted or uh, let down in life yet they can still stay strong in the lord and trust in jesus for something good to happen in the coming times right so uh, i really believe that we have so much to talk about this whole experience of jesus in our own lives but reading 
purpose, purely on the word of God. A purpose, people living on the word, obedient to the word of God. And I believe that that will be the greatest Christian call that we can have in our own selves. And that way, people can start working through our home lives. And from our home lives, draw out from us into the working place or school or society or marketplace or wherever we go. We need to share that infectious love with Jesus Christ. So it must begin right from the depth of our own heart and soul first. Christ dwelling in me. The, he, the Prince of Peace dwelling in me, living in me all the time. That will be the best way that we can share the Prince of Peace with the whole world. Well, that is so true. And I'm sure what you mean is that we need to share the love of Jesus Christ, the peace of Jesus Christ, especially with those who are oppressed, those who are being insulted, those who are discriminated. Isn't that what you mean? That's right, because today actually where, where we see in this commercial world, the world of you know technology, world of sometimes uh, you know all this growth around the place, a lot of people are let down in many, many areas. Sometimes their own workplace are let down, Sometimes they are made to do certain things that are not in keeping with the gospel. Some people are struggling and grappling with those issues. But I believe a person dwelling in the Prince of Peace, dwelling with Prince of Peace within, dwelling within them as well, can be a different person altogether. So the challenges are imminent all the time. We have challenges every day in our lives. People sometimes verbally, mentally, you know, physically can do various things to, in our lives. But uh, I believe and trust in, in, in going in counter experiences. We believe that our lives can be a very big blessing to many people who are struggling in, the, in our society, in our lives in that way. So I pray my, my recommendation to us is that we celebrate Christmas, that we first of all ask ourselves the question, what is Christmas to us? The Mass of Christ. Christ working in our lives and we work in Christ. And the Prince of Peace become so evident to us in ourselves. And I believe and trust as we celebrate, people will discover Jesus, the Prince of Peace, in the most powerful way in these days. And be able to share that in the context that we're living in. Maybe in the world, maybe. Maybe in our country, maybe. Maybe within our society, our government, maybe. And even our own selves at our own homes. So one more question, uh, and that is, uh, how can we spread the message of the Prince of Peace, that is Jesus Christ, in our own day-to-day -day lives, in our own day-to-day -day situations, whether at our workplace or at school or wherever we are? Dear Sean, actually, we live in a very multicultural, multi-religious society, right? And I believe and trust him, look at the very cross of Jesus, I really see the Prince of Peace really portraying himself out. You know, because when he, the very seven words that he spoke on the cross have a lot of bearing and I believe and trust that becomes a, a integral part for every different segment. Now, first of all, he spoke about the people who did all the wrong to him. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not know what they are doing. People who beat them, whipped them, uh, slandered them, spat upon him, crucified him, did all that. I mean, for him to be on the cross with all the sh pain and the shame and the insult and everything and be nailed and bleeding and wounded in such a pain, he still is talking about the peace, the love for them, the forgiveness for them. Isn't that, isn't that real peace for the Prince of Peace? Then on the next next level, he goes on to look at his mother. I mean, how can a person of that state really be able to look at his own mother when he's really in that tormented state? But he's taking that amazing love over that mother who brought him up in life to hand her over to someone who will take care of her the rest of her journey of her life, to John the disciple. And the next one, not to forget, there were two people on either side of the cross. One man was rebelling, right? That man was on the cross, a rebellious cross. The middle cross was the cross of redemption. The one, one on the right-hand side, I would say, was a man, man of repentance there. He was one man who was looking at Jesus all the time to see a unique personality about him. The Prince of Peace was so peaceful on the cross. And he saw something infectious in his life. And there he turns to Jesus and says, When you get into your heavenly kingdom, will you please remember me? And Jesus does not ask questions from this man, from where are you, what is your sin, what have you done, why are you here? There are no questions asked. doesn't ask him for his church background. Like the way we sometimes ask, 
is that today you are going to be with me. That assurance was there. So the Prince of Peace really portrayed himself on the cross of Jesus. And that's an amazing message for the whole world, for our society here today, for all, for all, for ethnicities or for religious maybe, whatever situation may be. We must derive from this the beautiful message that the Prince of Peace shared on the cross on Calvary. Thank you. Well, it has been a wonderful discussion about why Jesus is known as the Prince of Peace. So thank you so much, Reverend Melvin De Silva, for joining us on this uh, special program. So well, that's it for this very special episode of Crosspoint for this Christmas season, produced by the National Christian Council of Sri Lanka. So until next time, take care and God bless you.